I'll tell you what, we don't let Brother Jackson have all the time that he needs tonight. <coughs> Glory to God. <coughs> Let's give him hit your attention tonight. Make sure the kids sit still. Uh, appreciate Brother Jack. Amen. Love him. He's been a dear friend to me. He calls me King David all the time. Brother Bill called me Killer Miller and he calls me King David. So, I was talking to a guy down there at the funeral home the other day, down at Gospel. Uh, the other day, it's been what, about mm -hmm. two or three weeks ago, mm -hmm. when Brother Wallace died, and he came up to me and he's talking to me and he didn't ask me my name or nothing, so he walked on up there and, and he come back and he said, Brother, I didn't ask you your name. I said, what's your name? I said, David Miller. He said, you preacher? I said, yeah. He said, you said your name was David? He said, you got a good name. He said, you got, that's a big name to feel right there. He said, because David was a good, David was an apple of God's eye. He said, David done what God wanted him to do. He says, so you do what God wants you to do. So I'll tell you, that man didn't even know me, Brother Jackie. But he told me, he said, you do what God wants you to do. And I appreciate the Lord not. Let's give Brother Jackie a great big hand. Let's stand and give Jesus a big hand. Let's stand and give Jesus a big hand. service tonight and I felt like that this was the message that God wanted us to uh, preach tonight and uh, I'm not smart enough or educated enough I guess or whatever that I can just preach whatever I want to preach but I have to preach Sister Casey what God gives me Amen. and uh, don't always know what it's going to be I don't have it written out don't even have uh, notes to speak of but, uh -huh. We just depend upon God. God's such a good and wonderful God. Hallelujah. Yes. I love Him tonight. Amen. Appreciate all the good singing. It's just been great already. We can say the uh, dismissal prayer and go out the door, turn the lights off, and say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I like to worship God. Amen. Too many places you go into today, too many churches, Brother Wayne, you go into today and people just sit there like they're frozen over. Right. And I tell you, I think when we come into the house of God, we ought to worship God yeah. and we ought to be free to worship Amen. God. Amen. That's right. Amen. He's done something for us that nobody else could do. Right. And that's He let His only Son die on the cross Amen. of Calvary. Can you think about it? Amen. The King of Kings. Hallelujah. The man that every knee is going to bow before us and day after Woo. all. Come on. on. Hallelujah. 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 Every Blessings. knee is going to bow Come on. before the Lord Jesus Woo. Christ and they're going to confess that he is indeed. Yeah. Hallelujah. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Amen. I'm glad tonight that I know him in the free pardon of sin. Yeah. I'm glad tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. That he spoke oh, peace yes. to my heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He's been so good to me. Amos chapter 8, I want to say that it's a blessing to be here with you tonight. I appreciate uh, Brother David. I think I picked that up, King David, from Brother Bill Kinslow. I think he called you that a time or two. Uh, but I appreciate every one of you, a lot of you. I think about you a lot of times. We've been in some wonderful services together. Some of you, this may be the first time we've been together. But I think a lot of times about some of the great services we've been in. Brother Wayne, one of these days after all, all of God's children. Hallelujah. It's not going to be this month, Sister Janice, 
over there, or that bunch over yonder, or this one over there. But it's all going to be God's people. We're going to have a great big time. Right. Not going to be limited by any fiscal limitations that we deal with here. Not going to be bound by the clock. Not going to be bound by anything. But we're going to be in the presence of God. Yes. And we're going to be worshiping Him throughout all eternity. Hallelujah. Praise His holy, wonderful name. Bless you, Lord. Amos chapter 8, beginning in verse 11. Amos spoke here and said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Right. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst, they that swear by the sin of Samaria and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth, and the manner of Beersheba liveth, even they shall fall and never rise up again. Verse 11 is what we're going to preach on tonight, God being our helper. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. God, we praise your wonderful name. God, if we only had, Father, a thousand tongues tonight, God, to worship you with, Lord, of a thousand hands, to raise before you tonight, God, in honor and glory to the God of all heaven and earth. Thank you, Father God, for the plan of salvation. Thank you, Father God, for this time and opportunity, O Lord, that we have, Father, to come into the house of God to worship you. Thank you for the moving of the Holy Ghost that we've already felt here tonight, God. And Father, we pray, Lord, that we'll just continue, Father, to dwell under the cloud of the Holy Ghost, Father. God, throughout this service, it would anoint everything else. God, that's going to be said and done, Lord, I understand tonight, Father, how weak I am, God, but I understand that I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. And so, God, I pray, Lord, God, that I might just be surrendered tonight, God, and Lord, the Holy Ghost might come use me tonight, God, to minister. And Lord, may every heart and may every life be touched. May every life be changed. May every life be blessed. May every need be met in the house of the Lord tonight, God. And Father, we'll worship you and praise you for all eternity. And all of God's people said amen and amen. The prophet Amos said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a for water, right. but of hearing the words of the Lord. On, Everybody tonight, I know under the sound of my voice, we understand that we're living in one of the most blessed times ever was. Yeah. We're living in one of the most prosperous times ever was. Yeah. I know that some people are struggling. I know that sometimes, amen, it seems like it's hard to make it through. But I'm telling you that we're living in one of the most prosperous times that there's ever been on the face of this earth. But I want to tell you that it's also a time that people are falling away from the Lord God, Sister yeah. Janice, by the droves. Yeah. Hallelujah. A little 15-year-old girl in church last night asked prayer for one of her little friends at church and said she told her that she didn't believe there was a God in heaven, that she was going to go to hell when her life here was over, and that she was going to have a good time when she got there. Friends, let me tell you something. Heaven, or heaven was prepared, amen, for those that love God, those that will humble themselves before Him, brother Wayne, will put in their sins and be born again, except the love and the grace and the goodness of God. Hallelujah! But it says that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, and it's not a place, brother David, where they're going to go and have a party. It's not going to be a place of good times. It's not going to be a place where people are going to be happy. But it's a place where there's going to be eternal uh, torment. The Bible says that the torments never end, yeah. that there's no end, that the worm dieth not. It says that there's weeping and gnashing of teeth there. And friends, the Bible also tells me that hell is enlarging her mouth daily yeah. because people are turning away from the Word of God today. Yeah. I've never seen a time in my lifetime, I'm going on 65 years old. I know I don't look half that old, but I'm going on 65 years old. And I've never seen a time in my life that we're living in a world that we're living in today with yeah. so many people. 
are turning away from God. Hallelujah, I hardly ever, there's only one or two that I'll turn the uh, TV on and listen to them preach anymore. There's very few that I'll turn the radio sister uh, Casey on and listen to them preach yeah. anymore because they're not preaching the word of God anymore. You can go down the street far enough uh, and you can find a church that will tell you anything you want to hear. And then Paul said that in the last days there would perilous times come uh, when people would take heed to themselves teachers uh, because they had itching ears. Uh, and I believe we're living in that day to day. Uh, amen. Uh, Brother Roger Brown shared last night. Uh, he said that he remembered years ago uh, before his father died. Brother uh, uh, Hayes Brown. I don't know how many of you knew Brother Hayes. Uh, but he said he died in 06. Uh, so it was before 06 which means that it was more said that there was going to come a time that people were going to be walking around just like zombies because of drugs yeah. and the things that they were getting hooked on. Yeah. Well, are we living in that time today? Yeah. Is it a time when you can look on every street corner and there's somebody strung out? There's somebody on drugs? There's somebody on alcohol? There's somebody hooked on sex? I've never seen a time when it was that the church was hitting in the walls, in the closet, in the and the homosexuals, the lesbians, the bisexuals. I've never seen a time. Listen, I don't mean to be lewd or anything like that, but all you have to do is take your clothes off and stand in front of a mirror and you can tell whether you're a boy or whether you're a girl. There's a difference there. And if your body is a male body, you're a boy. And if your body is a female body, you're a girl. But we've got people today, people talk you know, there was a time when I was raised that parents, uh, amen, corrected their children. Uh, but you know, we're living in a day today uh, when the children are correcting the parents. Uh, when the parents are set back uh, and let their kids run the household. Uh, it's why? Because they've been told uh, that it's wrong to whip them. Uh, it's wrong to correct them. Uh, it's because there's people in the pulpits today uh, that are full of a false spirit uh, and the word send a famine upon this world and he said it wouldn't be a famine of the bread or a famine of water but it would be a famine of the hearing of the word of God. Somebody was talking about it the other day preaching on it and they said that it was because people weren't hearing and I thought well that's right until I went on and read the next verse where it said that they would go from sea to sea and from the north to the east and they would seek the word of God and they wouldn't hear it. I tell you what you can do churches here in Glasgow. Uh, you can pick a lot of the churches in Scottsville. Uh, you can pick a lot of churches all over this land and country. Uh, and let me tell you, we're so blessed in this area because we have so many uh, good churches where you can yeah. hear the Word of God. Uh, but we also have a great large number of them uh, that you can go into and you can hear everything but the meat of fried, as somebody said one time. Uh, amen. The ordaining homosexuals. Uh, yeah. I talked to a friend of mine the other homosexual. Amen. And he said that he went to church. Now listen, this church is a large church. And I doubt that that pastor knew who this man was. But he said they preached all over me. They felt that they caused me to feel so bad. But you know, there's a lot of places today that the homosexuals are going into and they're made to feel comfortable. They're in the pulpits of America today. There's no pastors of churches that are openly gay, that are living with another woman or another man, whatever the case may be, and they're ordaining them in mainline denominations today. Why? Because people aren't obeying the word of God anymore. Amen. Peter said that there was time for judgment to begin at the house of God. And he said if it's far with us, where the, where the sinner and the ungodly stand. James, let me tell you something. There's a hell that people are going to yeah. today yeah. just as wide open as they possibly can. Right. But thank God there's a heaven that's prepared right. for God's children. Yeah. And I'm looking forward someday after a while to end up to that place. Yeah. Listen, I think about it so many times, Sister Nora. And I think, well, if I mislead somebody oh. and Brother David one day after a while, I end up in hell. Oh. And somebody comes up to me 
and they say, Preacher, if you'd have preached to me the truth, and neither one of us would have been here. I'm telling you tonight that it's a it's a it's a fearful thing, the Bible says, to fall into the hands of a living God. It's a fearful thing. When I step into this pulpit, Sister Casey, I don't take it lightly because I know that I'm dealing with people's eternity. Listen, I didn't come here tonight. I don't climb in the pulpit at powerhouse. I don't go places and preach. Amen. Just to put on a show. Just to entertain somebody. I don't go to tell jokes and cut up and have a good time. There's a time to tell good jokes and a time to cut up and a time to have fun. The Word of God tells me a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Amen. But let me tell you something. The house of God is not a social club. It's not a place to go. But the house of God is a sanctified place yes. that has been set apart yes. and ordained of God for a place, yes. amen, for people to come together. I pray that this house will fill up. I pray that the walls will have to be knocked out. I pray that it will always be a place that people can come into and they can hear the word of God. The Apostle Paul told Timothy, I know you all know what I'm talking about tonight, but it's what God gave me to preach. And Timothy was Paul's convert. Timothy was a young man that Paul had taken under his wing. And he had been a mentor to Timothy. And he was trying to tell Timothy what to do. And he said, Timothy, he said, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Brother David, he didn't say preach when you feel like it. He didn't say preach when they call you and tell you they'll give you a big offering. He didn't say preach when somebody wants you to. But he said to preach the word. He didn't say preach what people want to hear. But he said preach the word. You won't necessarily be a popular preacher if you preach the word today. Let me tell you, but there's still people. I believe that there's a people today that's hungry for the word of God. Three or four years ago, something like that. And this lady and her husband, they go to another church. But they love Brother Danny and they wanted to come that night and they wanted to hear him. And we had a good old Holy Ghost tear down. And we were standing out in the vestibule before or after the service and we were talking about it. And Brother Wayne, she said, this is what I like. This is what I'm hungry for. Will you tell me if that's what she likes and if that's what she's hungry for? Why was she sitting in a place where they turn the lights down and they've got a stage? I'm going to tell you, when you look at what they're doing, they might be saying the right words sometimes, but there's a, that still old rock and roll spirit is coming in. I know there's a time of praise. I understand praise and worship. Sometimes our songs are just old draggy beat down songs about Granny in her rocking chair, rocking on a cat's tail and the cat's quilling, and we got happy and ran out the door. And those things don't do anything that make people feel in the flesh. I understand all about worship. I understand all, or maybe not all, but I do understand about praise, and I do understand about worship. And I do understand there's different ways and different types. I understand all of that. But let me tell you something. When your platform looks like a nightclub, when your platform looks like ACDC or, or some of them rock and roll groups, I don't even know who they are. But when it looks like a rock and roll place, when the place is so dim that people trying to find their seat trip on the chair and fall and hurt themselves, there's something wrong. I heard that one of those places, and I don't know, I didn't hear it out of my out of his mouth, but it came pretty straight to me that some of the kids asked him, asked their pastor, they said, Pastor, is it okay to drink alcoholic beverages? And he said, Well, I'm not going to tell you that it's wrong to drink a little bit of beer oh. or a little bit of alcohol. Oh. But Brother Wayne, what about that young person that goes to that party and they say, Well, my pastor said it wasn't wrong, yeah. and they'll drink it for or that first whatever they're yeah. drinking nowadays. Right. Amen. And the, before you know it, they'll drink the second one. Yeah. And the crowd will keep telling their friends, will keep telling them, drink 
church some more. Yeah. Maybe bring out some Jack in the Black or whatever they're drinking yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Amen. And before you know it, that young person, this their pastor told them there was nothing wrong with drinking. And before you know it, they climb into the car and they leave that party and they end up having yeah. a wreck. Yeah. Now you tell me it was okay for them to take that first drink. I've said it so many times and I'll say it as long as the Lord gives me the breath and the freedom to say it. I've never seen an alcoholic kid that started out to be an alcoholic. Sister right. Connie, but they started out to drink. Yeah. That one beer. Yeah. I remember when I was about 15 years old, I had a friend that was older than me, and he drank beer. And we'd get off work, and he'd say, let's ride down to the line and get some beer. Well, I felt pretty big because here I was, a 15-year-old, and I was drinking just like the 18-year-old. Didn't really like the stuff, but I drank it, amen, just yeah. because I wanted to fit in. Oh. And there's preachers today. Now, I did hear this one. There was a pastor in one of the bigger churches, I guess you could say, of Scottsville. And I heard him on the radio say it. It was on tape. And he said it where everybody could hear it that oh. was in his congregation. And everybody that was listening by the radio. Hey, we were coming into the place here, whatever it was, a year or so ago, when they were bringing up the food in Allen County to yeah. go prior to go with, and thank God enough of God's people stood up yeah. and banded together and we fought that thing and God kept it out of our county for the time being. But this preacher, I heard him right on the radios one Sunday morning. He said, now some of you may not agree with me, but he said, I don't see anything wrong with drinking some. He said, I know some of you were raised different, but he said, that's not the way I was raised. Well, let me tell you something, friends. It's not how I was raised. It's not how you were raised. But it's what thus saith the word of God. If I can't back up my opinion with what the Word of God says, my opinion is wrong. Somebody said the Word of God says it, I believe it, and that settles it. Well, let me tell you something tonight. The Word of God says it, and that settles it. Whether I believe it, whether you believe it, whether Ronald Reagan or, or whether Donald Trump or whether the Queen of England or anybody else believes it or not, the Word of God is going to stand true. And it will be true. Amen. When this world is destroyed the fire. Amen. You preach it. Come on. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I've never seen a time when there's so much perversion in the house of God. That's right. I've never seen a time when people come into the house of God. I've been in churches preaching. Amen. When, when I was back out in the world, I backslid on God. And I'd go into them strip clubs and women would strip off nearly naked. Yeah. And I've been in churches that you could see people, amen, and women in there oh. that were showing as much in the house yeah. of God as yeah. the strippers were showing. Oh. I don't know what they're doing in the strip clubs today. That was a lot of years ago. But let me tell you something. There's modesty that we need to have. I'm not preaching a clothesline message tonight. I'm not preaching a clothesline gospel. But the Bible tells us to be decent. And in a time when you can drive the highways and the byways, and you can see men and women running around, men that ought to be covered up like a I am or more. Amen. I'm ashamed of my body. But they're proud of their body and they look like something out of a comic book somewhere. They've got on a little pair of jogging shorts. Amen. Uh, uh, Brother Haskell Akins used to preach about it and he said they're not wearing enough clothes. Amen. To make a good wadding for a shotgun shell. Amen. And they're strutting around. Men think they got to pull their shirts off. I'm not just preaching on the women. But men think they got to pull their shirts off and show them what is it, six packs or whatever. Well, I guess I've got about two cases here. So, <laughs> hallelujah. But let me tell you something. People running around with chalk white legs. People running around like they think they're the sexiest man alive. Like they're going to be the next candidate for one of them on. magazines where they name the sexiest man alive. Or the women are going to be the next candidate to be on the Sports Illustrated calendar or whatever it is. 
But listen, the Bible tells me that we are to be decent. The Bible tells me that I'm to let my light shine. Well, let me ask you a question tonight. If I walk like the world, if I talk like the world, if I fit into the world, what have I got to offer the world? If they look at me and I'm no better than they are, what difference is there? The Word of God tells me that when we're born again, that old things pass away. And behold, all things become new. You just don't hear sanctification preached so much. You just don't hear the Holy Ghost preached so much these days. But I'm going to tell you, friends, what the world needs today is a sanctification. The world needs to be born again. And the world needs to be sanctified today. And the world needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And if the world ain't going to get it, the world may not can get it completely. I understand. But let me tell you something. The house of God needs a word of God. And I believe you've got some people here that's going to preach the word of God. And I the people here are going to serve God to the best of their ability. But I'm telling you that we need to in the day and hour that we're living in, in the year 2017, it's a time that we stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a time that we stand on the Word of God. It's a time that we call them out when they're preaching the false doctrines, when they're saying anything and everything goes. Oh, I tell you, it makes my heart break a lot of times. King David, thinking about where are those preachers going to stand? If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sinner and the ungodly stand? What about those preachers that... Say it's okay to be a homosexual. Come on now. What about those preachers that say it's okay to shack up? Come on. What about those preachers that say it's okay to drink? Come on. What about those preachers that uh, I saw something the other day where there's a church, uh, amen, that all they do is get together and smoke marijuana? Come on. Oh, my, my, my. Friends, what a shame right. the world is in today. What it is that people... Uh, Amen. Are flying under the name of a church, yeah. flying under the name of Christianity, and they wouldn't know the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. If he walked in and smacked yeah. him upside the head. Yes. Come on, oh, man. Come on, brother. Oh, Come on. to be this for this uh, rough tonight. I thought it was good. It's good. It's great. Oh, but listen, folks. It's I believe we're living in the days, and they must look down the telescope of time. Yeah. The Holy Ghost spoke to him, and he said, said I'll send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a uh -huh. thirst for water, but of hearing of the words of God. Uh -huh. Oh, listen, friends. I believe if there ever was a time that we're living in those days that Amos was talking about here. And I want to close this out here tonight with something that I looked in and I studied a while ago and it just leaped out at me when I was reading it. Second Chronicles chapter 5. Mm -hmm. As they had brought the ark back into the temple, yeah. they were coming back into the place and bringing things back in order. And you know what the ark stood for? The ark stood for the presence of God. Right. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of churches that you go in today and you can't feel anything. Right. That's right. I remember several years ago when we were back slid not living for the Lord and people would ask us to go to church and we'd go to church here and we'd go to church there. And I don't mean to be mean hearted or anything about it, but just telling you the truth, I'm not calling them by the name, so I'm not talking about them. But I'm just giving you an example tonight. There'd be churches, uh, Sister Casey, that you'd walk into. Uh, amen. And you might as well have been sitting under an oak tree somewhere uh, waiting for an acre to hit you in the head. Amen. Uh, amen. Because there was no spirit, no power uh, right. of God in that place. Uh, and we went to church, and we went to church. Uh, and there was no place, Sister Nora, that we found a place where we were getting what we needed. Uh, and I had an aunt. She was married to uncle. She's gone on to receive her reward today. Uh, but she was the secretary at the radio station. And I'd been working part-time, and probably at that time, maybe was still working part-time at the radio station. 
And she would tell us, she'd say, now we've got a young preacher in our church. I wasn't far from the area where we lived. And she said, God's a movement. He said, y'all just need to come on down to Clifton Church. And you know, we finally, Sister Janice, one Sunday morning, we got up. And we went to Clifton General Baptist Church. See, I'm, I'm not a Pentecostal because I was raised a Pentecostal. I'm a Pentecostal tonight because the Holy Ghost spoke to me and showed me that it's the way. I was brought up, I was raised in a missionary Baptist church. And then I got back right in a general Baptist church. Well, you're just anything and everything, aren't you, preacher? No, I just follow God. We went to that general Baptist church. And let me tell you, the Spirit of God was moving. There was a preacher there. And he was anointed of God. He was on fire for God. And God was moving. And we walked into that place. And we felt the power of God. And that's what I want. Yeah. I've said a lot of times we only run maybe about 20 or so down that powerhouse until God sends them in and we're believing right. that God's yes, going to send them in and we're going to to bring them in. Amen. But listen, I've said I'd rather have 20 that love the Lord. That's right. Amen. And to have a house full that's just there to put on a show. Or just to socialize. I believe in socializing. I believe in fellowshipping. But that comes after the worship. Amen. Amen. Oh, but let me tell you something. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. And uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 5, beginning in verse uh, 11. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place. For all the priests that were present were sanctified. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. That's what we need today. We need some pulpits to be sanctified. Oh, we need some pulpits to be purged. We need some pulpits to be set on fire. Uh -huh. You don't hear much about the fire of the Holy right. Ghost anymore. Uh, you hear a CB type of bow tie ride right about Alabama and Mama and Honda, yeah. uh, no. but you don't see much of the fire right. in the right. house of God anymore. Uh, but it said all the priests that were present uh, were sanctified and did not then wait the course. Uh, also the Levites, which were the singers, uh, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, uh, of Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren. Listen, 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 be arrayed in fine linen. Oh, glory be to God. When I read that, I thought how it is someday after a while that all of God's children are going to be arrayed in fine linen. And we're going to be in the presence of God. And we're going to have a crown of glory. But that's not what excites me. What excites me is to know that I'm going to be in the presence of God. sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen. Man, they were pure. They were holy. Yeah. They were righteous before God. They were washed in the blood of the Lamb that we sung about a while ago. Right. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And it says that they were arrayed in white linen having cymbals and psalteries and harps. Reckon it was Wayne and Connie Harp. <laughs> they were with harps. They stood at the east end of the altar. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. says there was a great host and they were gathered they were in fine linen and it says that the 120 priests were sounding with trumpets don't you know the trump of God is going to sound someday after a while and the sainted dead are going to come up out of the ground and those of us that are alive and remain I know some of you have heard me say it for 20 years or more but I believe that I'm going to be in the number when the trump of God Verse 13 says it came even to pass uh, as the trumpeters and singers were as one uh, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the 
trumpets and cymbals uh, and instruments of music and praise the Lord saying uh, for he is good for his mercy endureth forever uh, that then the house was filled with a cloud uh, even the house of the Lord oh, Amen. oh hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. How many knows that if you're going through something in your life and you want to see the hand of God move, the one of the quickest ways to see the hand of God move in your life, one of the quickest ways to get deliverance out of the situation that you're in is not to cry out and say, Whoa, gloom and doom. Who was it, Archie? What was his name, Archie? Somebody in there. Grandpa Jones and some of them uh, on uh, Hee Haw. A lot of you don't know about Hee Haw, uh, but Archie Campbell. Uh, and they get on there and they'd sing, Whoa, gloom, doom, despair, deep, dark misery, pain and agony on me. Uh, yeah. And that's what a lot of God's people are doing today. Uh, we ought to be throwing our heads up, lifting our hands, uh, and beginning to praise God. Yeah. If you want to get out of the valley you're in, uh, if you want to get out of the spot you're in, uh, just lift your hands and stand on the rock and begin to praise God and glorify God and you'll begin to see the mountains crumble. You'll begin to see the dark clouds roll away and the sun will shine for you one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't name to preach this long. Oh, you're good. So, it said, for he is good in the middle of verse 13, for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. Yeah. That then the house was filled with a cloud. Right. Oh, we need the cloud of God. I have felt the cloud of yeah. God yeah. just about from the very moment that I walked in the house tonight. One reason is because I take him with me yeah. wherever I go. But let me tell you something. I'm glad that we can feel the spirit of God. Yeah. It said, even the house of the Lord showed that the priest could not stand to minister by right. reason of the cloud. Right. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house. Yeah. Oh, Amen. that's what we need to yes. do. We need the glory of the Lord to fill the house. Hallelujah. Listen, I guess it's okay to have hot dog suppers and chili dinners Come and on. things of this nature. I understand that some ways and sometimes it's you can reach out to people that way. But you know it's not going to be the hot dog suppers. No, no. It's not going to be the bowl of chili that's going to win people to Lord Jesus Christ. But it's going to be when they come in and feel the power of God. When they feel the love of God emanating from God's hand. And they watch us and they see the life that we live. And they see that we've got the glory of the Lord. That's right. The peace of God. Our hearts Amen. and in our lives. Amen. Oh, but what really spoke to me was all that great host, all of them clothed in my And Sister Nora, I could imagine in my heart. Hallelujah, the time. Listen, folks. I've got to where I don't have the physical energy, the physical ability. A lot of things have grabbed a hold of this old body, but I'm still on the firing line for God. Yeah. Amen. I'm not down and out. I can't run and jump like I used to. If I was like I used to, I'd have done maybe run through that back wall back there. Yeah. Hallelujah. But listen, I just don't have it in me anymore. Physically, I've got it there spiritually, but not physically. But I thought about the time, amen, that I leave this world and we go into the gates of glory and I'm not going to look at the, the streets of gold. I'm not going to look at the walls of jasper. I'm not going to stop to look at those gates and say, ooh, and I'll look at the pearls. But I'm going to run down the street of glory and I'm going to run right up to the throne of my God. And I'm going to bow before him and I'm going to worship him. Hallelujah. I'm going to 
going to tell you tonight, I believe. Hallelujah. With everything in me, I believe that the race is just about now. I believe, Brother Wayne, I've said it several times, but I believe it. I believe we've rounded. You know, they have them races, the race horses, the Kentucky Derby, and all them. The Indianapolis 500, and some people are NASCAR fans. But listen, they'll round that last turn. And they, oh, glory. Oh, come on. Yes, Hallelujah. Oh, my, my, my. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless him tonight, Lord. Bless him. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Especially that old race horse. And I don't like the way they treat them sometimes. But you know that old race horse? They'll round that life turn. Oh, yes, they will. That jockey will stand up in that stirrup. Yeah. And he'll take that little riding yeah. crop. Uh -huh. And he'll spur that horse yeah. home to the finish line. Yeah. Friends, I want to spur you on to the finish line. Yeah. I'm not going to hit you in the top. I'm not going to put spurs in this house. But I just want the Holy Ghost to get a hold of you tonight and encourage you and let you know that we're right on the last round of the Jesus went yeah. back to heaven. Yeah. But we're in the last of the last days. It's just about over. Yeah. Jesus is just about ready to look over yeah. to Gabriel. Oh my. And Gabriel's about ready to put that trumpet up to his lips. And the sound is going to go out from that trumpet. The trumpet of God is going to sound. There's going to go out a shout. And the saints of God are going to be called up to be with the Lord forevermore. Amen. That's the word of the Lord tonight. That's right. Yeah. That's the word of God tonight. Not anything and everything goes. Thank you. Not anything and everything goes. But he said he was coming back for a bride that had made herself free. I've got to shut up. I've got to quit. Oh, but listen. I want, the, I want the singers and the musicians that they'll be able to come. I believe God's wanting to touch somebody's heart tonight. I believe God showed me all the gold. Now listen, I didn't look around. I've been sitting up here on the front. Amen. I don't want to listen and know what's going on. I don't want people to bellyache and cry and complain about what they're going through. But listen, I believe God spoke to me earlier tonight uh, and said there's somebody here that you're dealing with a situation in your ankle. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't have to know what it is. Uh, but I know the one that can heal that situation Amen. in your ankle. Uh, I don't know what you've been to the doctor and the doctors told you they couldn't do anything on, for you. Okay. But I'm telling you tonight that if you'll come and believe God, uh, yeah. it's not me, it's not Brother David, it's not Brother Wayne, Sister Nora, any of these others. Uh, but it's okay. Jesus Christ that took upon his back uh, the stripes for our healing, uh, our spiritual healing, our physical healing, our emotional healing. Uh, God is a God that meets all of our needs. Uh, yes. And not only is there somebody here tonight uh, that has a problem with your ankle, but there's somebody else here tonight uh, that you need healing. Uh, and I'm telling you that God can heal you tonight. Uh, I'm telling you that there's nothing that God's not able to do. Uh, if you need the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, uh, if you don't have the joy of the Lord uh, when everybody else is rejoicing and worshiping God uh, and you don't feel anything and you wonder what's wrong, uh, it's because you need to surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not saying you're not a Christian. I'm not saying you've not been born again. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying there's sin in your life, uh, but I'm just saying that there's a time that we need to be sanctified. Uh, there's a time that we need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Uh, there's a time that we just need to surrender uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, if you have a need in your life tonight, uh, my God, I don't know about somebody else's God. Uh, I don't know about the God they serve at the first frozen Baptist church uh, or the first icicle down the road, uh, but I know that hallelujah to God. Uh, I know that my God tonight uh, can meet your every need. Will you come uh, and trust God tonight?